this review is long overdue and I have unfortunately postponed it far too often. But today is the day I am introducing you to the Be Quiet Darkrock Elite, an air cooler that comes with cool ideas and overall nice and welcome innovation, but sadly is also plagued with weaknesses. Not so much in terms of cooling performance it offers, but rather in terms of how things have been implemented and were designed. Basically the so-called ideas and innovations that I'm talking about. The Darkrock Elite's price is currently at 100 to 110 US dollars, which isn't exactly little for an air cooler and is definitely heading towards the high end spectrum. In addition, today we'll have a particularly interesting comparison with the closely related Darkrock Pro 5, which is priced a bit more attractively than today's Elite model. However, both coolers have at least one weakness in common, and that is neither their price nor cooling performance. Is the Darkrock Elite a good deal at the end of the day? Should you get this cooler for your CPU or not? The scope of delivery is really good, as is typical for Be Quiet. Besides the air cooler itself, which is actually already as good as fully assembled, we also get all the mounting hardware, brackets, screws, etc., including some thermal paste, paper documentation and the manual to be specific, and finally even a screwdriver. From a purely aesthetic point of view, the Darkrock Elite makes anything but a bad impression. I generally like the design direction, as it is very minimalistic. Nonetheless, I have to admit that I actually prefer the cheaper Darkrock Pro 5 visually, because I don't really like too rounded designs. I feel the same way about Nvidia's Founders Edition cards, which many people find simply beautiful, but I don't. That's just an example. In the end, aesthetics are of course a matter of taste. The build quality appears to be on a high level overall. As is usually the case with BeQuiet's premium products, the heatsink here comes with black coating with ceramic particles. Unlike the Darkrock Pro 5, the Elite makes use of two equally sized 135mm Silent Wings fans featuring a fluid dynamic bearing. The upper plastic frame can be easily removed by hand as it is attached magnetically and then the sandwiched fan can be lifted out along with the cooler's top cover. The fan setting on the outside also can be removed from the heatsink. I generally think the idea of being able to slide this fan up and down in 5 steps thanks to a rail system to make room for high profile RAM is good and exemplary, but the implementation could have been better. The mechanism requires an excessive amount of force in my opinion, so that some users, mainly novices, will probably refrain of touching any of that, simply out of fear for breaking anything. I also do not like the fact that both fans used here are not standard and therefore quite proprietary and might be difficult to replace with conventional fans in the event of a defect. Furthermore, to top it all off, the two fans are hooked up to each other using a proprietary connector, which then ends in a standard 4-pin PWM fan connector. The ability to switch between P and Q mode, basically performance and quiet mode is great in my opinion. Big praise for that. In P mode, the max fan speed is 2000 RPM, in Q mode only 1500. I find the top cover quite appealing aesthetically. RGB lovers also do get their money's worth with subtle ARGB lighting, although it's not even all that noticeable if the LEDs remain off especially useful for those who don't want any bling bling in their system. The Darkrock Elite boasts a nickel plated copper base and 7 heat pipes, each with a diameter of 6mm. Our usual CPU sockets are supported. These include AM5 and AM4, as well as LJ1851 and 1700. Now the installation onto my test systems was child's play. As is often the case, be quiet, reuse their established mounting mechanism. While the heatsink has plenty of headroom for high profile RAM, the outer fan has to be moved slightly upwards so as to not interfere with the memory. I generally speaking don't find that very elegant, but this is not a rare occurrence with large, bulky high end air coolers and is simply inevitable. First I'm tasking today's CPU cooler of cooling my AMD Ryzen 7 3800X only to then deal with the toasty Intel Core i9 13900K at a power limit of 253 watts. 
testing is carried out with the test systems displayed right now. Noise levels. All fans are operating at max speed here. Out of the box in P mode, I was able to measure 51 decibels together with the entire system. That is already heading in the louder direction. It is remarkable, however, how much quieter the Q mode is at 45 decibels. The Dark Rock Pro 5 is overall a bit quieter, though. Temperatures at max fan speed with the AMD 3800X. Although these are no longer all too meaningful results, it is clear that the Dark Rock Elite is slightly ahead of the Pro 5. Temperatures at max fan speed with the Intel 13900K. The CPU is running at full load using Prime 95. Here the Dark Rock Elite achieves anything but bad results. In P mode it is comparable to the legendary Noctua NHD15 while being more compact. The Pro 5 model isn't far behind though. Once we switch into the Q mode, we noticeably lose cooling performance, but we still remain at the level of the Deepcool AK620, which does run at significantly higher noise levels at its maximum speed. In that mode, we are on average 1 degree Celsius ahead of the Pro 5. The Dark Rock Elite also keeps up nicely with Noctua's Legend under Cinevench 2024 load and is again 1 degree ahead of its little brother, Pro 5. The switch into the Q mode costs us 3 degrees of cooling performance. Temperatures at a fixed 40 decibels. Now all cooling solutions are set to run at a fixed exact 40 decibels. Now a Dark Rock Elite does drop behind the NHD15 and that's by several degrees. As usual, the Elite and Pro 5 are again about a single degree Celsius apart, with the result being a tie in Q mode. The same test repeated with Cinebench 2024 suddenly goes to show a completely different result, probably due to the slightly different AVX load compared to Prime 95. Now the NHD15 and Dark Rock Elite are separated from each other by a single degree. By the way, we aren't even far behind AIO liquid coolers at this point. The Q mode costs performance, of course, but obviously nothing too crazy. In general, a pretty interesting result when considering that P and Q mode are calibrated and fixed at 40 decibels in my test run. Conclusion. Despite the design flaws mentioned, it must be said that the Be Quiet Dark Rock Elite has a lot to offer in terms of cooling performance. The results seen in my chart confirm that. In extreme cases, it is still inferior to the legend by Noctua, but Be Quiet does provide an all-around more compact cooler, even though the dimensions of today's cooler are still fairly bulky. Still, I think the noise levels are great. You can quickly and easily make the Dark Rock Elite run pleasantly quiet without having to sacrifice a whole lot of performance. For me, I'd consider the sweet spot for the Dark Rock Elite to be at around 45 decibels, which coincidentally exactly matches the quiet mode. I therefore believe it's a bit of a shame that Be Quiet have taken such a proprietary, non-replaceable approach with their fans. This fact alone kind of takes away some of the joy I'd have with this product. Purely from a performance standpoint, the Dark Rock Elite is undoubtedly an eye-catcher and as such deserves a recommendation if you really want to live with those proprietary solutions. Do you agree with me on the weaknesses mentioned or am I being a bit too harsh? What are your personal impressions or have you perhaps already had your own experiences with this particular air cooler? As always, I'd really appreciate you leaving a like, but I'd also be okay if you hit the dislike button. With that being said, thank you so much for watching and until the next one.